Hi everyone, welcome to Korean Express YouTube channel. So here comes the part third of our video series in which we are learning medical related terms in Korean language. In the first part of the series, we learned the general terms related to the field of medicine in Korean. Then in the second part, we learned the names of different symptoms and conditions in the Korean language. Now, in this part, that is the part third, we are going to focus on learning the names of different diseases in Korean language. It becomes very important for us to know the Korean word for different diseases. Suppose you are suffering from a particular disease or you are sick, then you should be able to explain what kind of symptoms or what kind of disease you are having. So for that, it becomes very important for us to learn the medical terms in Korean. Okay, if you've not watched the first two parts yet, then you can go and watch it on Korean Express YouTube channel. Now, let's start with the third part. So here comes the first word and that is the Korean word for asthma. And that is 전식. 전식. Now let's move ahead and see how to say cancer in Korean and it is very easy um, um. the disease is complicated but the Korean word for this is super easy one syllable word um. now comes the word for diabetes and that is 당뇨병. 당뇨병. let's see the next one and that is tuberculosis and in Korean it is 결핵. Now let's move ahead and see the next one that is arthritis and in Korean it is 관절염. 관절염. Now let's see how to say malaria in Korean and that is very easy malaria. malaria. As you can see it is a loan word. Okay. Now comes the word for the disease typhoid. And that is Changti Pusu. Changti Pusu. Here comes the next disease, and that is tumor. And it is called Chungyang. Chungyang. Now let's see how to say paralysis in Korean, and that is Babi. Babi. Here comes the next one, and that is anemia. And there are two ways to say anemia. One is pinyol, pinyol, and the second one is pinyolting, pinyolting. Now both of these words they can be used to say anemia in Korean, but there is a slight difference between them. Let's see. Pinyol is more commonly used term, and it just simply means anemia. Okay, but when we're talking about pinyol ching, then this suffix ching, it adds the meaning of symptom or syndrome or condition. So pinyol ching, it can be interpreted as anemic syndrome or anemia condition. Okay, and uh, it has a more formal or medical nuance in it. So if you want to just simply say anemia and in a casual or general way then you use the word pinyol but if you are talking about anemic condition or anemic syndrome then we use pinyol thing both of them are correct okay but in most contexts pinyol is sufficient and is generally used to mean anemia and pinyol thing it is more formal or a kind of more medically uh, appropriate term for anemia okay so this is the difference although both of them they can be used interchangeably sometimes right now let's see the next one and that is flu in Korean it is tokam tokam next comes the disease pneumonia and it is called 폐렴. 폐렴. 
Now let's see how to say stroke in Korean and that is 뇌졸중 뇌졸중 Next comes the Korean word for allergy and that is allergy allergy again it is a loan word right now comes the Korean word for chicken pox and that is sudo sudo here comes the next one and that is yellow fever and in Korean it is Huang Huang now let's see how to say smallpox in Korean and that is Chonyeondu. Chonyeondu. Here comes the next one and that is cholera. And it is called cholera. Cholera. Again, this is a loan word. Now comes the Korean word for rabies. And that is kwangyeongpyeong. Kwangyeongpyeong. You might be thinking that uh, this syllable pyeong is coming in many Korean words, right, for different diseases. So, you might know this, that Pyong is the Korean word for disease, okay. So, rabies disease is Kwangyeon Pyong. So, here we are talking about the disease rabies, okay. Pyong kind of denotes that this particular word is a kind of disease. Okay, that's why you'll see that many Korean words for different diseases, they have this suffix pyong attached to them. Okay, next is the Korean word for dengue and that is dengiyeol. Dengiyeol. Now, here yeol is a suffix that is used in many Korean words for different diseases. Why? Suppose that disease has a relation with fever, which means you are going to have fever while suffering from that particular disease. So fever in Korean is yeol. And therefore, for example, over here, dengue is a kind of fever. So therefore, we have attached the suffix yeol to denote that this is a kind of fever. Okay? Now, comes the next one and that is hepatitis and in Korean it is kanyom kanyom now as we are talking about suffixes here comes another one yom you'll see that some uh, Korean words for different diseases they have the suffix yom attached to them yom means inflammation a kind of inflammation so kanyom in hepatitis you have uh, a kind of inflammation. So, yom denotes inflammation whenever it is attached as a suffix to indicate a particular disease. Okay, it means that that disease causes inflammation in your body or in some part of your body, in some organ of your body. Okay, next comes the disease conjunctivitis and that is kyormagyom. Kyormagyom. Here also, uh, conjunctivitis, it is uh, a disease of eyes. So, it causes inflammation and therefore we have attached the suffix yom. Okay. Next comes the disease jaundice and in Korean it is huangdal. Huangdal. Now, let's see how to say scarlet fever in Korean and that is songhongyol. Songhongyol. Now let's see the next one and that is osteoporosis and in Korean it is called Kulda Gunting. Kulda Gunting. Now comes the next one and that is meningitis and it is called Sumagyom. Sumagyom. And the last one is the Korean word for gastritis and that is Wiyom. Wiyom. Alright, so in this video, we learn the names of many diseases in Korean language. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe Korean Express YouTube channel. Thank you.